All right, we'll get this meeting of the City of International Falls regular City Council meeting to order. It is 5.30. If you could all join me in pledging allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Um, please note that uh, Councillor Wegner is out of town. He is on vacation. He let us know that in advance, that he wouldn't be here this evening. Um, everybody else is present. Next item on the agenda would be to approve the agenda. We did uh, get a request to have uh, item number three removed off the agenda for the evening. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with that deletion. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next, we have the minutes from uh, the July 1st regular city council meeting. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. I'll second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries, 4-0. Go to the minutes of our Committee of the Whole on July 8th. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Second. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries, 4-0. That brings us to the uh, Resolution for adopting the payments and claims. We have International Falls transfers of $66,666.66. That is coming evenly from the 601 Water Fund in the amount of $33,333.33 and the same amount out of the 603 sewer. Going to the 403 reserve for capital outlay is $20,567.25. That's coming from the 601 water in the amount of $14,693. And the 603 sewer in the amount of $5,874.25 for a total transfers of $87,233.91. Accounts payable, International Falls has uh, accounts uh, payable claims of $670,843.46. International Falls Library Board claims of $5,953.90. Airport claims of $5,760.67. And airport major claims, uh, and it's just a reissue of avoided check, uh, $725.34 for a total accounts payable and claims of $683,283.37. Chair would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution and pay the, the bills. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Second. Second by Councillor Holden. Any discussion, questions, concerns? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes, motion carries 4-0. Next, we'll go to audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to bring something forward that's not on the agenda? Hearing none, we will uh, give you an opportunity again later in the meeting. We'll go down to the opening bids uh, for quotes, the household garbage service quotes. All right. Betty, how are we handling that? Thank you, Mayor. As per the new garbage ordinance, um, we put out quotes to uh, accept quotes, excuse me, for garbage service for those that are cited and we need to enforce garbage service on those properties after a process of time and um, notices and things. And uh, we received one back and therefore today we will open that publicly and mm. s state what that fee will be for us to do that and that vendor will then if we ever have to enforce this on a property they would build a city of international falls we would then in turn 
um, add that to their billing, a monthly billing, and if not paid, it would be something that would be able to be assessed at the end of the year to their property taxes. Excellent. Well, let's open up that quote. So the quote is from Friends Garbage. And the quote is for one year as stated and for a 48 gallon weekly service tax included is $26.34 um, for a weekly service. Okay. Friends Garbage Service 3131 Highway 53 and they currently hold a city license number 136 to do garbage collection within our city. Okay, so then do we take uh, action on that this evening? Yes. Okay, so the chair would entertain a motion to accept the, the bid that uh, came in from Friends Garbage. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Councillor Taylor. Discussion? I, that's, that's weekly, sir, a monthly. I was just going to ask that same question. Is that monthly or weekly? Well, it's monthly to pick it up weekly, I'm assuming, because that's what my bill is. Yep. That is correct. Yes, no. thank you for Just that. to make sure yes. people know. Weekly service billed monthly. Monthly, correct. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we'll go down to the second and final reading of the updated International Falls Charter as presented by the Charter Commission. As you remember, we had to have a full city council to do the uh, original reading on this because we have had a, a full council um, approve the first reading. The second reading is just confirming. Uh, we will not need to have a full council for the second reading. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve the second and final reading of the International Falls Charter. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Kaler. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? Just once again, I'd like to thank everybody on the Charter Commission and uh, for all the time and effort they put in. We, uh, it was funny, we started, when we started, one of the things they said, this isn't about wordsmithing. Well, <laughs> I don't know what's beyond wordsmithing, but we might have did that, but nothing really changed. It's just simpler and more easy to follow. And, uh, and Lisa and Betty and the city staff were immensely helpful, and the people that were on it did a great job and very enthusiastic. And they'll be glad to hear that it's cross the finish line. Excellent. And so if this gets approved, it has to be printed and then 90 days after printing. Is that correct? That is correct, Mayor. Um, once publication is, is taken place, what we will do due to this complexity and size, we will publish a summary and notice that it's available for full review at City Hall and at the public library. And then it has to be 90 days and then it's effective. The um, residents have 60 days in order to um, bring in, if they choose to, um, a petition to have it on as a referendum item. So um, there is, you know, a further process that needs to be done. But yes, that is going forward what will take place. Excellent. Please. I want to thank Pete for being on that too. Pete, you did a good job on that. You're, you're the one that was cheering it up, and oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well. well. I had lots of help. As you all know, it takes a village with beat sometimes. So it went good. Yeah. <laughs> and this will be and we still will be meeting once to twice a year. And if there's ever any questions or thoughts that people think we might need not need, whether it's from the council or anybody else, we will be meeting a couple of times a year. Excellent. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries 4-0. <clears throat> Next, we go down to the approval of the an annual audit as prepared by Schlinner and Winner. Uh, Ryan, I don't believe he is online. Um, we had this presented to us last week. There is a, um, we're still waiting on some information from the airport uh, to put together a final copy. So. Uh, the city administrator and myself just suggested that we hold off on approving uh, this until after we uh, get the whole thing finalized and we just put in a request for 
extension. Is that correct, Betty? Yes, and in, in, thank you, Mayor. In speaking with uh, Ryan at uh, Schlender Wenner, he doesn't anticipate any negative impact to the city's audit, the city portion of the audit, once the airport portion is complete. And he, he said it's up to the council if you wish to do it contingent upon that final approval or just waiting until that is done. Um, so he was okay either way, but you know, it is, it could change slightly, may not change at all. Um, you know, we would have to come back if it does change and you know, final it. So um, my suggestion would be to hold it until it is complete in order to have all of that information as a completed document. Does anybody feel compelled to approve it today? Um, if not, we can just table this to our next council meeting. I move to table it. Okay, we have a motion to table till our next council meeting. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any d discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Uh, aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries, 4-0. So we'll have that on our next council meeting and we'll put in a request for extension. All right, uh, next, consider the closure of 4th Avenue from 3rd Street to 2nd Street uh, for July 27th, 2024. On the Rocks is going to have a street dance. Terry Wood, please come up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilors. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're planning a street dance for the it's a block, summer block party for July 27th um, on the avenue, block, basically blocking the street off from the alley, kind of like, well, exactly like how we do it for icebox days, from 3rd Street to the alley on 4th Avenue. Um, my insurance is with Tammy Doherty, and she gave me the thumbs up today that our coverage has been endorsed, and obviously we follow all the all the rules and regs per licensing um, but we are we're having a live band and it's deep tracks with Eric Kulig and they will actually be on the avenue and fun food factory gave me a go-ahead today that they're gonna be present so we'll have some some food available also and it's from 8 until midnight and hopefully we can get everybody out of there by one. Excellent. Yeah. Any any concerns that the council might have? We haven't had any problems in the past with anything? No. Good. No, this is my fourth year and yeah. so far so good. Not gonna Okay. Win. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sure. Please, Chief, do you have any concerns? Uh, no concerns. All right. Good. All right. Chair would entertain a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Bowler. Discussion? I'll try and stay awake till eight. <laughs> you talk free? Yeah. So hopefully everybody can show up and yeah. enjoy some live music. So. And we're becoming quite the music the hub here music. In, in International yeah, Falls. Right? So yeah, no doubt. I like yeah. it, yes. All right, we have all a motion that to be a second. Great. I will uh, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. All right. You're good Thanks, to go. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Next, we have the International Falls Kuching County Airport Commission semi-annual update. Thor and crew, come on up. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes. Um, here, you know, we uh, had some dialogue with, uh, with Betty uh, regarding what, what materials wanted to be shared tonight. Um, we've brought some with us, so, you know, a lot of it has been shared over the, you know, over the past six months, years with, with uh, uh, Walt and Tim representing the, the airport from the city side. Let me, um, let me share a couple of quick things, just kind of a review for the, for the folks of the city and to understand uh, the importance of the airport. I'll just, you know, start in here quickly. Um, Minnesota's 133 Thanks. publicly funded airports, and of those 133 public airports, only nine have scheduled carrier service. Of those nine were the smallest, which were very, very fortunate. Um, of the 133 airports, five have a U.S. Customs Immigration. Uh, 
Uh, the airport obviously supports uh, Medivac uh, for the hospital, uh, supports uh, air freight uh, daily, uh, Bemidji Airlines has a four day uh, a week contract, Tuesday through Friday, uh, that provides a UPS uh, freight for, for the area. Um, airport directly uh, employs 200 employees. Uh, MnDOT study, which we shared at our, our joint meeting six or now seven months ago, whatever it was, uh, just reminding the group that was a 2019 study, and in 2019 dollars, uh, the airport contributes $28 million in positive economic uh, impact to the community in the area. So obviously, it's a, it's a, you're getting bang for the buck. A um, couple of couple of quick things um, uh, before we we get into the questions and answers. I just wanted to share what else uh, we were chatting earlier tonight. Sean and Kyra and I is that uh, there's also some good news on the funding, which we'll, which we'll uh, ask uh, Sean in a little bit here to share where that is. I believe it's gone to now 1.25%. 1, 1. So uh, that's really, at this point, please ask questions. We're here to help you. Perfect. Well, per first, let me say thank you for coming today. Sure. One of the things uh, about two years ago, one of the the things that uh, Councillor Buller had brought up is we, we give a lot of different entities funds and we don't really necessarily know all the time where where they go. And then as we've been having deeper conversations about the um, joint powers agreement that we have, we find out in there that we're supposed to have an annual, a semi-annual report. So we just want to do what's, what's inside there. And it's fantastic to have you guys come in and just give us a report of what's going on at the airport. And I think uh, we've all been Pretty, pretty clear that we understand how important the airport is and uh, servicing both Cooching County, International Falls, and just want to say thank you for, for coming. Um, I'll open it up for questions unless you guys have anything, other, anything else to present. If I'm, go ahead, go ahead. Walt, please. No, I'm just- Go ahead, Walt. I don't have a question. I'm oh. just saying, that, go ahead, John. Sure, I guess the yeah. only thing I have to add is that um, airport funding primarily comes from the FAA. Uh, it is um, um, called the Airport Improvement Program. It's funded by Congress. And just recently, uh, they passed a new AIP program, as uh, Thor alluded to, that will actually fund the airport uh, with FAA dollars uh, to a greater degree, uh, both in uh, dollar amount, which is $1.3 million uh, per year because the airport uh, receives uh, 10,000 employments, which is somebody uh, getting on an aircraft. Um, so with that $1.3 million, it's able to be used on FAA eligible projects, such as safety and security type projects at the airport. Uh, in addition to that uh, new legislation that passed, that new funding, uh, there is also uh, an increase in funding amount. International Falls would typically receive 95% funding from FAA. Uh, they've increased that to 97.5% uh, for the next year as part of that legislation. Uh, so any FAA projects that are completed at the airport then would receive that, that funding amount. Uh, the airport also receives funding support from MnDOT Aeronautics at the rate of 70% of eligible projects. The airport uh, actually just received some maintenance equipment uh, this year, uh, a lawnmower uh, that was funded by uh, state funding. Um, so that the MnDOT Aeronautics, uh, they help out where the FAA uh, cannot support due to FAA rules uh, that are custom by the uh, The airport uh, has a requirement to keep a 20-year CIP uh, on kind of on, uh, on the plan. Uh, so the airport has that. We meet with the FAA monthly uh, to help kind of go through the projects that uh, both are ongoing and also the ones in the future. Um, so right now there's a, a, a grant application for uh, some FAA projects that include um, mostly safety equipment, uh, snow removal equipment, uh, both for aircraft, uh, removing the ice off aircraft, as well as uh, runway de-icing equipment. Um, that's really about it. We meet monthly with FAA, go through the projects, and, and uh, keep them up to speed as they're one of your uh, larger funding uh, sources. So happy to answer any questions that anybody may have on the airport. I, I think I from a couple of meetings, I understand right, the 1.3 million a year, though, that doesn't have any share to it, right? It, it does. So that would be the uh, federal amount. Yeah. Um, so that would be the 97.5%. So the project oh, okay. would be like 
Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right. Yep. Okay. Perfect. How do, just a um, real quick question on how, how does the, uh, some of the charters that come in, I know we've had, we have another one coming up pretty quick. How, how do those work? How, how does that uh, work with the airport? Like, the, like as for, for flying in, because they aren't a daily fly-in, you know, how do we set up things like that? There's people that um, greatly appreciate having that opportunity here. Is there other opportunities for things like that? You know, it's a great question. Literally, it, you know, what happens is it's a, it's a market and it's a supply and demand. You know, yep. if they demand it, they'll bring on more flights. But a lot of folks do do utilize Sun Country. We call them junkets, okay, to, <laughs> to, to Nevada. It's a great deal for the for the local folks because the majority of the majority of the cost of the flight is covered actually by the casinos. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of folks uh, do the do the uh, the junket flights and do, do do the flights to Nevada, and uh, they don't even gamble. They they just use the, the opportunity to to take the, take the aircraft the to get to Nevada to to not even gamble get get a, get a great deal on the on the trip on on the cost of the aircraft the cost of the motel and rent a car and, and, and go do the tourist thing. So yeah. Perfect. But yeah, it's it's great. Are there any other opportunities for things like that, or how how does did we did the um, airport contact them? Did they contact the airport? I mean, how how does that work? It's a combination of both. Initially, uh, initially, Sun Country actually contacted us and said, "Hey, can you know can can we do this?" We said, "Great." Hmm. Um, we're fortunate that our airport is large enough, uh, meets the category of, of the fire uh, of, the, of the fire needs, what have you, fire fire truck support, hmm. um, the, the proper. Um, Jet bridge when it's working, shiny. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, it, it, we're fortunate that we have a large enough airport to do it because the 737 balance field length is something at the level of uh, 5,500 feet, and we're at 7,400 feet, so that's helpful. Yeah. And and I I know the the council is pretty updated on it, and there's been some issues with the building. Could you just touch on those a little bit? Yes. Um, little brief history on the on the new terminal building. Uh, from day one, unfortunately, it's, it, it is the way it is. Uh, the roof was uh, was designed a subpar, uh, combination of the design, a combination of the actual workmanship, etc. Through a series of events and a series of promises that were not kept, uh, the commission made the proper made the proper uh, decision uh, to bring a suit against uh, the architect, the engineering firm, etc., and a lot of the sub a lot of the subcontractors. We're in the middle of that litigation as we speak. And so, uh, um, in fact, just recently, the uh, rain event 2700 last week, mm -hmm. you know, three weeks ago a month, uh, we had some issues with some lighting in, in the terminal building. And uh, we found the cause was that enough water has come through that some of the electrical work, some of the quote unquote support cans uh, in the roof are, are, are filling full of water. So that's been added, that's been added to the suit and so it's all mixed into the blend, but it's been, uh, been, been, been quite, uh, quite, quite a, quite a, a, a event. Huh. Mayor? Yes. Um, Mr. Wagner has a question. Um, he asked if the FFA asked about the EMS station. Can handle that one, um, please. So, uh, Councillor Regner is referring to like a joint use facility uh, on the airport property to um, manage emergency crises both at the airport and then use it as a community function uh, to help both the county and the city manage any sort of emergencies. Um, I did ask FAA this question, and, and unfortunately, um, they view it as a non aeronautical use. Uh, so that is uh, a use, whether it's a, a business or a facility, that doesn't have to be at the airport. So it, uh, it could be next door, it could be downtown. That function could be served um, regardless if it's on an airport or not. Uh, the FAA is very particular about how they use their land that they've provided funding to. Um, so it's a federally obligated land, that's the term that they use. So if you wanted to do something like that, you would have to convince the FAA that there is a non-aeronautical uh, use in the form of a land release. So you release the land from federal obligations, the FAA would have to buy into that uh, idea, uh, then they would formally release those obligations and allow the city and the county and the airport commission to move forward with that facility. Uh, so it is possible, however, the FAA doesn't give up their land easily and without uh, uh, strong proof that it can't go elsewhere or there isn't a, a place that would make more sense uh, to give up those uh, FAA aeronautical rights. Um, so certainly a, a possibility, but uh, it would have to be shown on an airport layout plan and then the FAA would have to be brought along that 
decision making process. Excellent. All right. Um, any other questions that they have that we, anyone has for those? All right. Oh, oh please. I, 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 please. I just like for Cairo to give us a explain this one to him. Uh, Employment. Yes. Like yeah. everyone asked, which was that one? Yeah. So I provided a copy of our updated uh, mm -hmm. employment. Um, so this is just for SkyWest employments. This does not include any other airlines that come through Sun Country or um, privates or anything like that. Um, as of um, June, uh, we are at 6,335 total employments, and so we look at the outgoing employments, and that is what goes towards our 10,000. Um, for the year, so far this year, we are up again, uh, almost 900 employments over last year. Um, and then last year, we were up significantly, up 48% over 22, so our employments continue to track uh, a significant increase. One of the, the questions that always comes up when, when we talk airport from folks is scheduling, and I, I know that you have given a great um, answer to me that I, I understand. Can you talk about uh, the scheduling and how that happens and why we have the scheduling we have? and if there's any possibility to make it a little bit easier on local folks? Sure. Um, SkyWest Airlines uh, is a subsidiary of Delta. That's our, obviously our carrier here. And what happens is, is that when we're on the end of the food chain, uh, literally on the end of the food chain, um, they're battling for uh, slots, quote unquote, arrival and departure slots in Minneapolis. And, and they want maximum yield for those areas. So uh, each, each slot, each uh, rival point each gate is very very expensive and big delta says hey we're you know we're carrying some of the value we're carrying a lot of the monies uh, to rent those to rent those spaces uh, for those flights every day and we want to put larger aircraft in those and utilize those in the mornings and the evenings for the pushes and that's what happens with the smaller carriers such as are the sky west that and, and it's it's a money game to them and and it's also big brother delta is, is quote unquote driving the bus, in a sense, to a degree, mm -hmm. um, to, to set those schedules. And I appreciate that hardly, but we've really tried, you know, we've tried hard to say, you know, and isn't that we can't run it back up the flagpole again and say, you know, let's see, let's see if we can improve it, but I appreciate that, I do. Okay. I do have another question from Mr. Regner. Um, what revenue does the airport receive from the deployment? Please. So, um, Airport funding, um, you know, comes in a, a couple different categories for a commercial service airport like International Falls. Um, the federally uh, AIP program that funds capital projects. Uh, another uh, source of funding uh, is the PFC program. It's called the Passenger Facility Charge. Each airline ticket has a four dollar and fifty cent charge per leg of your flight, uh, and that is to help local airports um, with different. Uh, Kind of maintenance and uh, infrastructure upgrades that specifically support the airline operation operating at the airport. So four dollars and fifty cents is primarily the revenue that is um, generated from passenger activity at airports. Um, there are other types of activity of uh, fuel sales. So I mean, SkyWest every time they come, they're buying uh, gas from the airport. The airport commission has a fuel flowage charge. Uh, so they're receiving uh, money in that regard too. So, uh, but those are the, the two main ones that you would see from from that activity. If if please, I may, please. One of the uh, one of the important funny funny things that, that's really interesting is the EAS funding. So, without essential air service, the air we don't have an airline. Um, again, on the end of the food chain, our numbers are small. So, thank thankfully we have EAS, essential air service. But what's interesting about essential air service dollars is it's fully generated by the end user, the majority of those monies, it's pretty cool, the majority of those monies are paid for by foreign carriers that are using our airspace. So as an example, Lestanzia comes from, uh, let's just say, an arbitrary discussion, they come from London and they're going to LAX. The time frame that our controllers in the United States control that aircraft out over the East Coast, till the time it arrives at LAX on the West Coast, 
they are charged significantly for that use. And so big part, a big part of that funding pot for EAS comes from foreign carriers. So it's a, it's a very creative, uh, it's, a, it's a very creative and very effective way to, to fund EAS. So, so that EIS fund, uh, that, that yep, yep. yes, please. Does that uh, that just go right into the the airport um, commission fund, or how no, does? No, it does not. It comes out of department. It comes out of the department of transportation, and those checks are written double quotation marks directly to the airline. We, we do okay. not facilitate those money. So do we receive any of those funds for like the passenger fees or anything like that? No, it just keeps us up and running. Go in with how We it receive works. the PFC funds. So okay. we get a check each month from Delta, SkyWest. Okay. Uh, all other airlines are, are normal that we receive and then those funds go to specific projects. So currently the majority of our PFCs are going to the terminal project. Okay. It sounds like airport funding is really easy and simplistic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Any other questions for, uh, for these folks? If I may. Please. Um, interesting story uh, to share and, and, to, uh, and to, to give some uh, positive input uh, to our, your esteemed, uh, literally, uh, Fire Chief Adam Manasa was involved in something that was very helpful. On July 6th, uh, I was uh, actually driving. I was north of St. Cloud about 20 miles, and at 7.30 in the evening, I got a call from Minneapolis Center. And it was an emergency call. And the protocol is as follows, that if a uh, scheduled carrier airport, a small airport such as ours, where we have a lack, or not a lack, but a small amount of staff, protocol is that if Minneapolis Center has an aircraft that has a in-flight problem, and they're declaring an emergency, and they're concerned about a fire, of course, they pick out one of the airports that has crash fire rescue ARF, which is us. And uh, so I answered the phone, obviously, and they go, hey, Thor, and what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, uh, we have an aircraft. It was actually a Swar engine uh, Merlin three, uh, twin engine turbine airplane, high performance aircraft, and he has a major uh, uh, issue with one of his engines. He would like to make an emergency landing at Hibbing, but it being a, the July 4th weekend, could not contact anywhere, anywhere there. So made the call to us. They said, we're already on the way to National Falls. Can you help us? I said, absolutely, we can help you. Um, I called back to my staff. I had one staff member on at that time. And I was just uh, uh, picking up my phone to actually contact uh, Fire Chief Manasa to see if I could get some help. And he was already calling me because through the, when Minneapolis Center pushes the big red button, a lot of things happen. People get called, fire support gets called, ambulances get called, law enforcement gets called, et cetera. So it was uh, very, uh, it made me feel feel good. It comforted me that I was driving along and all of a sudden there's my phone lighting up with Fire Chief Manasa saying, hey, can I help you? That's exactly what he said to me. I said, absolutely. So uh, Fire Chief Manasa uh, uh, took his time on a Saturday night, came to the airport, supported my guy, uh, law enforcement. I believe Adam, maybe the county that particular event? I think, uh, yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Uh, and uh, my nephew, Drake Dill, was also involved, and my uh, quasi-nephew, uh, Keen uh, Gonzalez, uh, who, who is my quote-unquote quasi-nephew. So make a long story short as possible, um, gentleman landed uh, with uh, one agency cured, not running, uh, uh, dangerous situation, used up the whole runway, et cetera. Thankfully, no fire, no death, no injury, no harm. But I just say from a point of pride, uh, thanks to Fire Chief Manas for his help. It was very helpful. So what happened with the plane after it was all said yeah, and done? Yeah, great question. Uh, taxied in, uh, <laughs> got them parked to the blocks, and uh, and did a did a maintenance to work on it. They contacted some folks uh, and sent a maintenance team and 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 to fix it and to a point that they could bring it to a maintenance center. And I believe they actually flew to all places to Winnipeg to, to have work on it. So Excellent. Great question. So, oh. Thank you. Good job. Well, I think this is all we need. Thank you, guys. And I, I would really appreciate if we do this again next year. I think this is fantastic. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. It was thank very you. educational. Thank you. Thanks for coming, John. All right. I think we're going to the second page. We are. All right. Uh, next, we have adopt a resolution. Uh, to approve the Public Employees Retirement Association Spare Firefighter Engineer Declaration for Michael Fisher's membership into the Public Employees Police and Fire Plan. 
Chair would entertain a motion to approve. Uh, so, so moved. Uh, we got a motion by Councillor Buller. Second. Second by Councillor Holden. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes, motion carries. Next, we have a, a removal or repair order uh, for the hazardous building located at 2210 Third Avenue, Third Avenue West, I'm sorry. City Attorney. Chelsea, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sorry. It took me a minute to unmute. Um, so 2210 Third Avenue is um, a, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a trailer park. Um, it's actually just a trailer that's being removed, the building, um, broken windows, broken doors, uh, holes in the floors, that sort of thing. Um, just needs to come down. And then the next item is Real Dreams Property LLC. Another building that probably needs to come down. Um, last I spoke with Jared and I drove by it. I didn't go in it or anything like that. Most of it you can see from the outside, the foundation is buckling. Um, he estimates that it's probably been pushed in about four feet, um, the, the structure walls there. So just two properties that are in bad shape. Okay. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to approve that order. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Is, is this for both of them now? No, just the first one. Just the first one? Okay. I'll second. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. And then the second one would be uh, to approve the removal or repair in the matter of 1029th 20 Street. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Holden. Chelsea, any, any additional information on this one? This is the second one I was talking yeah. about where the foundation's buckling. Okay. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes, motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to public works recommendations. Consider the donation from the Rainier Rec Club for scoreboards at Holler Field. Tim Ringhofer. I thought maybe you were just here for the rousing conversation about the airport. I've been here 30 years and my first meeting ever. <laughs> uh, I was approached uh, a couple weeks ago by Britta Hagen uh, from the Rainier Rec Club. She was watching uh, Little League games, summer ball games. And she said, geez, what are we going to do about getting scoreboards at uh, Holler Field, just like we have over at Rizzo? And uh, she said that Rainier Rec Club would be very interested in donating those. So I uh, just saw, so happened I saw Ted that same evening, and I talked to Ted about uh, is there a way that the city could help us out by installing those scoreboards, getting the uh, electricity to those places, getting the uh, standards in, the poles in to hang the scoreboards on. Uh, and of course, we, I came to the public works meeting last Monday and we discussed that uh, we should come before the council and uh, make sure that that was something that we could get done hopefully this summer uh, so that when next season starts, obviously with spring, we'd be very difficult to get out there and get those in before the season started. So I was hoping that we could get those installed this fall. All right. Was there any concerns that came out of public works on it at all? Oh, there's oh, well, a lot there's of concern about the maintenance of it afterwards, but I see in the letter that they said that they would not want to be responsible for any maintenance out prior or after the okay. snowboards are put in, that they basically give them to the city, the city's responsible for maintenance and everything after that. Okay. And I think we're fighting another concern, what was so when, when they need to replace, won't, won't be for a long time. That, that isn't, go hopefully, um, the city will not be liable to replace them okay. it won't be all right um i'm so scared Might that not. i even want to say this mike do you have any thoughts on this it's baseball i think it's excellent <laughs> and yeah. i am all for it <laughs> yeah all right Big well bad. likewise we all are. i'll we make a motion all that all right we have a motion from uh councillor holden do we have a second i'll second second by councillor buller any discussion question what 
Have they ordered? They haven't ordered them yet. We have not ordered them yet. No, we were they waiting to make sure everything got approval. And uh, we have a tentative delivery date on it, so that we know. We, I have. I was told that once we order them, it would take two weeks. Okay. For them we to be delivered. To make sure so that we get them in this year. Then that'd yep. be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a motion and a second. I'll call the question. Aye. 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 All vote yes. Motion carries. Thank yes, you. Yes. The way it's going, we're going to need at least two weeks for it to be dry enough for Rusty to be back there putting them in. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next, we have a request from International Falls Rotary Club to use a silver scissor lift for the local artist Bruce Trask to freshen up the downtown murals. Bob. Thank you. Uh, Bob DeGross, representing the Rotary Club of International Falls and a local resident of International Falls as well. And the club has been working to raise funds to restore the five murals that are in town on five different buildings. And uh, we're just seeking the assistance of the city of International Falls by the use of that scissor lift as an in-kind type of donation towards this project and everything, so, yeah. I can't imagine there was a problem with that at Public Works. The only problem was we were, quite, we were questioning insurance-wise whose insurance is gonna cover that that time period did you come up with something Betty I didn't I know you had mentioned uh, in your context that you were going to talk with the rotary whether or not that would be covered yeah we do have a uh, insurance carrier for the rotary club in the United States um, and for our district rotary club which covers the local club as well as it does when we do like the beer garden and things like that okay so I'm just working with them to assure that the uh, current liability type of coverage that we have mm -hmm. is gonna be okay for that, this type of work. Yeah. And um, hopefully we'll hear from them within the next week or so as to whether or not we need additional. But once we get an approval, whether or not this current liability or if it needs to be modified, mm -hmm. we'll make sure that you get a, a copy of it and everything, okay. so. Yeah. Perfect. And also to ensure all the safety precautions I use like harness dit, harnesses and yeah I believe that Ted, type of stuff and some know. training if they haven't had it yeah yeah, yeah. exactly right yeah. Ted had said that he would or one of his crew yeah, would my, work with uh, yeah. Bruce to do the training right, right. All right. Yeah. So. Yep. perfect all right so chair would entertain a motion I'll move we have a motion by Councillor Kaler second by Councillor Buller any additional discussion hearing none call the question aye aye, aye. And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Thanks All for right, your thank support. You. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, next we have a couple of uh, recommendations that came out of Committee of the Whole. Uh, approve the revised earned sick and safe time policy with revisions that align with the amendments signed into legislation on May 24th, 2024. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. We have a second. I'll oh, second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, approve paying out the accrued ESST for employees that are now exempt from accruing ESST, uh, which are volunteer ambulance attendants, e EMTs, and casual paramedics, volunteer firefighters, and spare firefighter engineers. Chair would entertain a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. We have a second. I'll second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion? Just uh, want to make clear on what this is. Last year when, uh, when the state had instituted ESST, um, they had said anybody who is paid by an organization needs to have their employees uh, accrue sick time um, and there was not any exemptions um, now they have approved exemptions for people that volunteer their their schedule so uh, fire, volunteer firefighters EMTs people that are not um, a nine to five or a scheduled employee over the course of the last year have earned sick and safe time um, the city is not required to uh, pay that out. Um, however, we have chose to pay that out because it was something that was um, regulated by the state. We had to put it in and these people did earn that time over the course of the last year that they did work when they were called out for EMT service or to a fire. So um, just trying to clear our books and make sure that uh, we are 
handling it um, and being being fair to the employees that uh, were underneath that regulation. So we have a motion and a second. I'll call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 4-0. Next, uh, we have a resolution approving one and a half times the regular uh, hourly pay rate for emergency medical technicians, EMTs, and casual paramedics on some holidays. The holidays are inside your packets. Um, so the chair would entertain a motion to approve those particular holidays. We have a motion by Councillor Fuller. Second. We have a second by Councillor Holden. Discussion? Call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 4 0. Next, we have uh, uh, approval of submitting an offer to purchase property at 2232 2nd Avenue East. Um, this is for the, uh, the Kutaska building. Um, we are submitting an offer for to purchase the building for one dollar um, after taxes, it would be one sixty-five. I think that's pretty excessive. Um, but the chair would entertain a motion to approve submitting that offer for purchase of property. I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Councillor Holden. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? Uh, I'll be abstaining because I'm on the board of Kutaska. Okay. Um, any other thoughts? Betty, did you have anything to add on this? I have nothing additional, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I'll call the question. Aye. Aye. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just going to abstain. Not. Okay. And I, I will vote yes. Motion carries three for the motion and one abstention. Um, any other business to come before the council? Hearing none, we'll go to the reports of the administrator, attorney, and the department head, city administrator. Uh, Mayor and council, nothing additional at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions for the city administrator? I, I just have one question only because we're getting closer and closer and uh, um, I see there are some folks that are interested online. When is the filing period for uh, city council and mayor? It's in, it's in August, I believe, but when, when do we have that? July, it opens July 31st, runs 30th. 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 30th and runs through August 13th. 13th. Okay, so it's for a two week window. It is a two week window and for the city of International Falls, it's the counselor at large position and the mayor position that is open currently for this next um, election. And uh, it, it, it came to my attention that somebody uh, who was looking at running for mayor thought that I still had the option of running for mayor as well. And I'm not, I have no interest in running for mayor. I love the position. I love what uh, we've been able to do here as a community. Um, so in the event that uh, I do not get elected to the state house, um, I'm going to have a little bit of spare time here in our community and I think I'm going to enjoy that just as much as I do this job. So um, we do have the two open positions. My name will not be on it. Um, so I just want to make sure that that's very, very clear. This isn't a midterm election for me or anything like that. So um, we'll go to the city attorney. Do you have anything to add this evening? I have nothing additional this evening. Okay. Uh, department heads? All right. We'll go down to, uh, in your packets, you have the police monthly report for June. We also have the fire EMS uh, report for June. Um, reports of the mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Anybody have anything to bring forward? Uh, well, our Councillor Buller wanted to talk about the, uh, the July 30th um, Port of Entry Modernization Project. There's an open house that's going to be on July 30th at uh, 9 a.m. at the Coffee Landing. And they'll have the same, uh, relatively the same program, if you miss that time frame, at 6 o'clock at the Bacchus uh, Community Center. This is for the Port of Entry 
um, how the federal government is looking at changing the entrance uh, to get into uh, Fort Francis and coming back from Fort Francis. So um, there are some businesses that are concerned. I think there's some uh, residents that are concerned and uh, this will be a great opportunity for us to talk to the, the folks at the GSA about the project. Anything else? Uh, just that uh, you, I was appointed to the Rainy River Basin uh, One Watershed Plan, and we are inching ourselves closer to getting uh, a plan, a document up. Um, we're going. We reviewed the first part of it, the policy committee that the uh, other committees have been working on, and they're going to go back and review it again and then there'll be some more internal stuff but hopefully by next spring we will have that document and I would urge anybody that when they see notices to attend a meeting about it and what it's going to be about to attend um, so you know what's going on and um, we got what the, what we're going to try and concentrate on in the next 10 years with the dollars a uh, big part of it's going to be hopefully some help with the erosion, but and everything else in between in there. So when there's an opportunity to look at it, or, you, or there's meetings when those will be, maybe probably won't be towards more winter as when there, but just to, um, if you're interested, you should come and attend so you know what's going on. When I have more of a document, I'll share a little more here um, at it. And I'd just like to also say, uh, if you got some spare time this week, give blood Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at the Covenant Church. They have openings. Irene Anderson from the VFW is in charge. Takes a little bit, of t doesn't take very long. I do it every time, and like I say, <laughs> there's snacks at the end. That's all they own. And you re it's really a good thing to do. Yeah. If you're able. Any, anything else? I, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody, um, volunteers, um, uh, city staff, police, fire, ambulance, everybody for the 4th of July. Um, this year was a, a week-long event. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's not going to be the case next year, just with the way that the, the <coughs> holiday falls next year. but. Um, we started the first with, uh, with a concert uh, from Chris Cluey um, that was put on by Bacchus Community Center. Uh, weather ended up making it a little bit rough, so they ended up moving it from the amphitheater, which is a fantastic venue for outdoor music, to Bacchus Community Center. On the second, we did Kids Karaoke, which uh, Kyra Hasbargan's son stole the show with uh, his country rendition of everything. Um, fantastic, the kids karaoke was a, a, a wonderful evening. Uh, the Mother Pluckers played on the 3rd of July. They did uh, fantastic, people milled around and the, the food vendors were, were great. The Dirty Dozen came out and played on the 4th of July. The parade went off without a hitch. The fireworks were fantastic. Uh, the events in the park from the VFW doing the, the um, the wood chip pile, the elks doing the the watermelon, everything went off fantastically on the fourth and the fifth of July, doing it just a little bit different this year. The the two bands um, having Bill Pekarski Bill Pekarski come out and play um, always has a, a great uh, group of people and uh, Gen X Jukebox, which had a tie to International Falls. Uh, they, they absolutely rocked it. I, I think it was a fantastic uh, one week event. There were so many people in town uh, for class reunions and just, just people in the community. And I, I just want to say thank you. And if I, mm -hmm. I did miss anybody, um, it, it's not on purpose. It was uh, just a great showing from everybody. And I just want to say thank you to all the people that put that together. There's gonna be a wrap up meeting um, later this week on uh, the 4th of July. We'll kind of wrap it up and see uh, see what we can do next year and how we move forward for next year's event. 
uh, as weird as it is, the 4th of July is in the charter as an official city um, function. So we, we, this is the one that we, we throw it all out on. Um, the bass tournament and uh, all the other events that we have in our community are fantastic. But this is the one that is uh, commissioned by the city of International Falls. So um, it was fantastic. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, we'll go to audience. Anybody in the audience to bring anything forward? All right. Uh, correspondence in your uh, packets. You have the Kuching County Board of Commissioners minutes from June 25th. International Falls Public Library meeting information July 10th and International Falls Port of Entry uh, project, I, I touched on that. Our next meeting is gonna be on August 5th uh, at 5.30. So by that point, you could have already signed up to be counselor at large or mayor. So with that being said, this meeting is adjourned. We do have an EDA meeting directly following it.